All right, we just got the breaking news. Thank you for being with us here on MSNBC. The Supreme Court issuing a ruling on the Colorado ballot case. I want to go straight to Ken Delanian, who is outside the Supreme Court with this decision. Ken, what do we know? Good morning, Anna. We've learned that it was a nine to nothing decision ruling that Donald Trump can be on the ballot in Colorado and other states. Uh, justices during the oral argument seemed very skeptical of the idea that one state could decide for the nation uh, whether Donald Trump was an insurrectionist and was therefore disqualified under this 150 year old provision. Now we know that there was not a single justice who who held that view. So there were no dissents to this nine zero decision uh, ruling that Donald Trump can remain on the ballot in Colorado as voters go to the polls tomorrow during Super Tuesday and also in Maine, where there had been a decision to disqualify him from the ballot. Uh, and, and this ruling, we understand, has the effect of prohibiting other states from attempting to do so. And that really reflects what we heard from both liberal and conservative justices during the oral arguments, Anna. Uh, it, for example, Elena Kagan confronting uh, the, the plaintiffs, essentially saying, your problem here is that you're arguing that one state can decide for the nation who can be president. And no justice was willing to go along with that. And Lisa, you are looking through. We have our our, our Lisa Rubin here with us. Uh, as you look through this decision that was just just put on the website there at the Supreme Court, yep. what stands out most to you besides the fact that this was a nine zero decision. It was a nine zero decision, Anna, and the decision was decided on the grounds that Congress, not the states, has the power to enforce Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Still, you have four justices concurring in the judgment, meaning they agree with the result, but also concurring separately and saying that the way that they disagree with the majority or the per curiam opinion is that they don't feel that they needed to decide that Congress is the exclusive enforcement mechanism. Both Justice Barrett, who is concurring only for herself, and then Justices Sotomayor, Kagan and Jackson concurring separately say they don't need to decide anything more than this is not a right that belongs to the states, but all four of them casting doubt on the idea that the exclusive mechanism of enforcement here is congressionally enacted legislation. That's important because one other way that you could find that someone is disqualified is through, for example, a federal court ruling, or you could find that someone is an insurrectionist through their criminal um, through criminal liability. So there are a number of different ways that I think these justices are raising. Section 3 could have been enforced, and yet the per curiam decision says not only does the power not belong to the states, you have to have Congress act affirmatively in order to disqualify someone from the ballot.